Hello, Bagby Barracudas. I'm very happy to be sharing a new art project with you today. This is an example of the project we'll be doing. We will be making landscape silhouettes using watercolor pencils to make a sky or background. And then we will be cutting out a design of, in black paper that will make our foreground in silhouette. So here's an example of this project. We have a couple of palm trees. Um, we have the ground going edge to edge on the bottom of the paper. And we have this kind of nice leaning palm tree, which gives it a nice interest. And we have a nice colorful background where it varies in how much saturation there is in the color. And we've got a little orange here. We've got some lighter pink. And that makes it an interesting sunset sky. Here's a couple other examples. Here we have a city skyline and we have a purple and pink sky and we've had just simple rectangles. But when you look at this, you know that's a cityscape with a beautiful sunset, maybe it's a sunrise sky. And again, this page is the bottom of the foreground. What is the silhouette in the foreground is edge to edge on the paper. Here's another example. Here we have a, a mountain, but not only is it a mountain, it looks like this top of this mountain here has some black smoke coming off of it. So maybe it's not just a mountain, but a volcano. And we also have a really nice and interesting sky with the variation in the different colors. We have blues and lighter blues and kind of teals and greens down here. The other thing I'd have you notice is all of the examples we're looking at, if your page is this way, the movement of the paint is going this way. And if your page is this way, is in silhouette, sorry, in, pro, in <clears throat> excuse me, portrait mode, the lines and the movement of the paint is going this direction. So if we're holding it this way, it's still going from right to left or horizontally, not vertically. And if we're in landscape mode on this piece of paper, it's also going from right to left or horizontally. Here's another fun example. It took me a minute when I looked at it, but then when I figured out what it was, I thought it was so cool, really creative. This is, we have our blue sky going this direction, and we have a dome shape here with a little door, which makes an igloo. And we have a baby penguin, and we've got a bigger penguin. And this, I believe, is the tail of a whale disappearing under the water. I thought that's a really fun design. Here is another example of a skyline. This one has a different color background. We have some purples and we have some blues and some whites. And the way this is painted, you almost see like there's some clouds here. Does that look like that to you? Here is another example of a mountain. This time the mountain is jagged, has jagged edges, and I think it makes kind of an interesting shape. And we have a mostly blue sky with some purples, and then a little pop of orange and yellow and pink there. It makes it really fun to look at. Here is a desert landscape where we have some rocks and the ground and some cactus, almost like agaves. And we have some variation in the color. We've got some yellow down here and a nice big streak of orange sunset sky up there. Again, notice that this page on the bottom half goes edge to edge in the foreground. Here we have another mountain. And this time we have some birds in the sky. Here's a fun one. This background has lots of colors, which is super fun, but we have a hill and we have a couple wheels here. It looks like we have a mountain biker or a motorbike or a dirt bike going up the hill. Or maybe it goes this way. Nope, it goes this way because notice the colors are going that way. And again, even though this ends way down here, you still have edge to edge of the black silhouette. Here we have just a castle on a hill. Again, we have different colors mixing together 
and I think that makes it look really interesting. We've got the sunset down here and the sky is darker up here. And finally, we have one piece here, and this one's interesting because it has a couple different features. Now, normally a landscape has a background, which is the sky, and a foreground, which is the closest thing to you, and the middle ground, which is some things that are in between that make up the horizon line. In this case, what you have is, this is the foreground, and this is, I think you probably know who she is. Can anyone guess? That's right, it's Mary Poppins. She has her bag, she's on the roof, you can see her hat and her umbrella, and she's in the foreground, she's closest to us. But over here, this is the rooftop skyline of the roofs of the buildings that are far away, that are going up a hill, and we have the smoke coming out of some of these teeny little chimneys. So here we have foreground, middle ground, and background, and that's the colorful sky. Let's go over what we need to do this project. In your school supplies, you will have an art kit, and it will say Bagby Barracuda Art on the label on the top. Inside your envelope, you will find a big piece of paper to cover your workspace. You'll unfold it and lay it out to protect your desk or table where you're working. You will also have a few different kinds of paper. You're going to have white sheets. You're going to use the white paper for your background painting. And then you'll also have one same size piece of black paper. And then you'll also have a few pieces of smaller black paper for cutting other shapes if you need extra. Your kit includes some paper towel because we'll be using water for this project. You also have a set of watercolor pencils. You'll have a brush and you'll have a pair of scissors. You will need one thing from home and that is a cup of water. I've got a cup here and it's about half full. Oh, and finally, you have a glue stick for making your finished product. Before we go to the next step, I'd like you to look at just a couple examples to maybe spark your creativity about what kind of animal you might like to do. Here we have a, a simple background. We have a just blue and it fades into a little purple. We have the ground and we have a wolf or a coyote standing, on the, standing there and just a little bit of grass showing. Here we have another simple one. We have just a thin, thin foreground of the ground or the ocean and the sun setting and just a few birds up there. How about a rhino, rhinoceros, with just the ground and just his shape and some sunset colors? Or, like a, is it a leopard or a cheetah or a great cat? And simple, just one stick and the animal. Oh, and there's a few more sticks over here. So here's a few examples of animal silhouettes. Here are some examples of landscapes in silhouette. One, we have here a little farm scene. We have a blue sky, just a windmill, and a little, little outbuilding or a little barn, and the grass, and you can actually see the texture of the grass here. Another one is we have some stones here, so it's black all the way along here, and then we have just a person standing on a rock. Okay, before we begin working, let's make sure we lay out our workspace. The first thing you want to do is you want to do is cover your desk or table with the newsprint, the giant piece of paper. You want to find your white paper. Let's make sure we have a paper towel, our brush, and a cup of water. Okay, I moved my newsprint paper off the table just so that you can see my work a little more easily but you should keep your work area covered with the newsprint it'll keep the paint off your desk or table and then at the end when you're done with your artwork you can take the paper and throw it away and it's easy cleanup 
Before you begin, you should make sure you have what you need. You have your pencils, you have your paper, a paper towel in case you get too much water going on. You got your brush and you've got your cup of water. Before I, then the next thing I do before I start is decide, am I going to do a paper, a landscape that's going to be lengthwise, which is called landscape, <laughs> or will I do one in portrait mode, which is vertical. So I'm going to have my, paper, have my page vertical or I'm going to have it horizontal. It just depends on what, how much space I want to do my landscape. I think I'm going to go with a portrait, a vertical page. I'm going to begin with my yellow. And I'm going to put in kind of big batches of color all across the page. Mm, I should do more yellow. And you don't need to worry about filling in every inch of the paper because once we add water, we can move the color around the page and fill in the gaps. And I'm going to add a little, little bits of orange here and there. And work down my page, just go down the center maybe. And then we can fill in here with some red. Let's do a red corner. And mix all the colors together. And one of the things I discovered as I experimented with this project is that you may need to stop and sharpen your pencils. It's a lot of paint, a lot of color to go down. And some of my pencils got kind of used up in the process. So I have a little gap here. I'm gonna put in some yellow. I'm going to keep going down the page. I'm going to do a big section of yellow going this way and maybe a little bit across. And we'll switch to some orange. Okay, I'm going to pause and fill, finish the page. And then we'll show you how it, how it looks when you add water. Okay, my page is full and I've got color mostly edge to edge. Enormous, all, nor, notice all of my strokes of the pencil go from side to side and there are no lines going this way. What we're going to do is use some water. And if we have too much water, that's what our paper towel is for. We're gonna start by just getting the page wet on the top and we're gonna work our way down. And as you get the paper wet, the paint will begin to move and the lines of the pencil drawing will start to disappear and you can push them around the page and the colors will start to blend. And because we chose colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, they are blending really nicely into more variations of the spectrum when you come to red and orange and yellow. And so I'm gonna go and keep going edge to edge. And if it happens to me, you should be working on your paper, but if you get too much water, you can dry your page a little bit. And keep moving the water back and forth. Notice my brush strokes are following the direction of the color strokes, which is from right to left, no, we're not painting up and down. So we're keeping that kind of interesting variation. So you notice I have sections of yellow, where it's mostly yellow. I have kind of sections where it's mostly red or orange. And then I have sections where they're all the different colors are together. I'm going all the way down here and mix these together. And some of your lines will still show. And some, you can just give them a couple, a couple more brushes, maybe a little more water move them across the page like this. And there you have your background. And the next step is to cut your black paper to make a silhouette. So let's think about, would you, let's stop the video for a minute and pause and think about what kind of design we might like to make. So we have our painting finished. We want to find the black piece of paper that's the same size as our background painting. 
which is this one right here. You should have some other pages that are a little bit different size. And I'm gonna be cutting my page and designing it this way in portrait. So this page is vertical. And you have a white um, watercolor pencil in your supplies. I'm gonna start by, make sure I leave an edge to edge on the bottom so that we make sure it looks like a foreground. And let's make a, I want a little hill. So this white color is really nice to white draw on the black paper. Cause you can, you'll be able to see it. So there's my hill. And I think it's gonna be difficult to make my hill and the other items in my drawing all at once. So what I'd like to do is cut my hill first. This is my hill. I'm gonna give it a little curve. And then I wanna take the part that has the white pencil on it and put it so that it won't be seen. And I'm going to bring my piece of art here and lay it down so that I have my hill. Okay. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm going to try to draw a, a wolf or a coyote. I'm gonna call it a wolf. So let's see, he's got a curved back like this. Maybe he has a tail. He's got a slope like this, and he has ears, he's got an eyebrow, a snout, and then he's got his hair, and he's got his legs there, and he's got his belly. I'm gonna start his leg here. But I think he's gonna be like standing on the hill. So let's cut this guy out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut these shapes out and lay them on your paper and look at them and think, oh, does that work? Maybe it does. Work the first time, maybe in silhouette it doesn't quite look like the thing you wanted it to be. So you can always try again. You can cut another piece. And he's gonna be standing on the hill, so you won't be able to see all of him. So I'm just gonna set him so that his legs kind of disappear onto the hill. I think he needs a taller ear. So there's my there's my adjustment. Ooh, that's a better ear. So here I have my wolf. And his back legs are kind of on the other side of the hill. So we have our foreground, and he's a little bit in the background because part of him is hidden by the hill. And I think he needs some grass behind him. So I'm going to make some little cut out pieces of grass. And I'm gonna pull a few, well, I'm gonna cut a few lines in curves.
and then we'll pull a few out so that we have some gaps so that you can see the color in between. And you can do anything. You can do a nature scape. You could do a cityscape. You could do a silhouette of people in your favorite location, on a hill, on a beach, anything like that. I'm doing this kind of fast and you'll notice that some of the pictures I showed you had a lot more detail and some had fewer. Um, you can think about what you might like your piece to look for. But I've done kind of a simple design here so that you have an idea of what we want this to look like. So when you're finished, let's make sure, well, first thing we're gonna do is make sure, or hopefully our paper's a little more dry, but we're going to make sure that um, the pencil part is gonna go down. So, put this here, and take our glue stick, and glue, especially glue all the way to the edges. And hopefully by the time you've gotten to this step, your watercolor has been drying a lot. And if it's not quite dry, we can set this piece of art aside and come back to it. So here's the part with the pencil, and I make sure with the glue is gonna go on the side of the paper of the cutouts that has pencil. This is not a perfect wolf, but when he's in silhouette and he's a little bit behind the hill, when I see it, I know that he's a wolf. I know he's got a long tail and I know he's got pointy ears. And then we're going to put our grass next to it. And I'm lifting this up and kind of setting this behind. It's like a wolf in the desert or a coyote. Oh, no. you, you tell me. You think he's a. Let's think about whether we think he's a wolf or a coyote. I think I need to pull out one more piece of paper here. There we go. Okay. And there you have it. We have a coyote on a hill with a sunset behind him and a little bit of nature to make the picture interesting. So we have something that kind of fills the whole page. I hope you have fun thinking of, of a landscape silhouette and enjoy practicing using the watercolor pencils. Please make sure you hang on to these art supplies so that we might be able to use them again in the future sometime.